Hello everyone, Jeremy here again. I just wanted to post a quick update to uh, help you guys out a little bit. If you're having a problem with the dragging and dropping of files into Cricut or Silhouette, uh, Silhouette more so, I don't know a lot about Cricut, so hopefully some of these tips might apply to Cricut. But if not, uh, I'm going to work on trying to find a way to help out the Cricut user soon. But in any event, to anyone that's been having a problem dragging and dropping files into the template, maybe a way to help you design the files in the template without dragging and dropping um, to kind of size it right. It doesn't always work perfect in every case, but at least uh, help you guys get a little idea of some ideas you might not know about that you can try to do to size the template. So without any more, let's go. All right, guys, let's get started. So we're going to load up our template here. I'm using Silhouette Studio Business Edition. So these tips or tricks that I'm going to show you guys um, may not necessarily work if you're using designer or basic. Hopefully they do, but I'm just not entirely certain what um, each edition includes. So we're going to load our template here. Now... This over here is the design I'm going to be using. Um, you guys probably can't see it too well, but you'll see it as I drag it into the thing. So this is the design I'm going to use. You're going to see here, if I try to do drag and drop, and it's probably because of the orientation, uh, that's more portrait oriented than landscape oriented, but I've saved this in landscape and it doesn't do much different either. So in any event, when I drag and drop, you're going to see, if I drag and drop the file into my template here, it crops it like that. Obviously no good as this is the actual file that I'm working with. Right there. You can see here that's cutting off a lot of it. So I'm going to change this back to nothing the wrong thing here I hit the pick scan mat I'm going to change this back to nothing here okay and actually I want a white background like it was going to give me I want a white background for this so I'm going to go ahead and click the template there and I'm going to go ahead and um, pick my white background okay now I'm going to take my design and obviously it's too big so I'm going to crop it on down to about where I want it to fit. So I want the balloon to fit, I want friends to fit. Now with this image here, I can just size it down, place it on my template, and print it out. And if I was actually printing right now, I would do this and then I would go ahead and do this so at least the image is centered on here, okay. So, and if you want to do it up and down, you can, but it usually highlights it too far down. So I, I like that. So when you print that out, it ends up looking like that straight. Once again, it's not curved how you think you need it to be to match the template. Well, if you take your cup, now I just printed this on a piece of paper so I could see how it worked out. If you take your cup and take your paper and wrap it around like you would if it was your vinyl and your whole piece you did, you can see even with me not curving that, it doesn't look bad on the cup curved and it doesn't really look bad with friends being curved. It almost kind of looks like it was maybe meant to be like that. So it's not perfect, but um, the customer I'm making it for, I am doing four of them and I'm giving them a good price. So I'm not worried about it being absolutely perfect. Plus this image gave me a little bit of heck. So that's what I, ended up going with but that is not exactly how I did that so that was one way I shown you of how you can do this so another way here I'm gonna go ahead and clear this out Ooh. oh see now be careful when you do that because it does give you a trace when you go to print that trace won't print actually let me back up for a minute okay you can see even if I zoom in here you can see where you can see the red outline from Silhouette putting the trace on there. If I was to go and print this right now to do a print and cut, you'll see when it does the print preview, 
and I do a lot of my sublimation prints out of uh, out of silhouette. So now I didn't size it up, so it's not matched on my template. But you can see there's no red line in the print. So if I was to print that right now, it's fine as long as I don't move the image off the screen or the mat. I put it back on the mat after I print it, and and I go to cut it. It would cut perfectly, you know, just like it should have because it had the cutout line around there. Um, and actually, you wouldn't cut that. You'd be cutting the template, but it, it, it would cut out right anyway. So uh, just to show you that red image doesn't matter. So anyways, we're just going to go ahead and get rid of this. Second way to do this, if you guys go into your library. Okay, I'm in my user designs right now. Close your user designs. You'll see a folder under your user designs or designs called patterns. So you see my patterns here. I have all kinds of folders and patterns because I constantly fill in designs with different backgrounds and patterns. You can see each one of these, you open them up, they have all different kinds of backgrounds and patterns. So I make a folder on here. Let's see if I can figure out how to back out. I make a folder on here called temporary template files. You can see on here, I threw a few of these because I've been playing around with it. So these are in patterns for a reason and I'm about to show you why and you can simply anything you want to put in as a pattern Let's say I want to put this in as a pattern for a background I can just grab it and drag it literally right into the patterns and I'm in my specific Folder that I made but you can put it in any folder or just drag it into the plain old patterns folder over here See, it drug it right here, but you could also just have drug it right on this screen. I have a couple things down here. Um, so then when you go back into your design, when you click your template, if you come right up here to fill pattern, that will load up. Hold on one second. Now, these are all the fill patterns I have in here. You can see these are all the ones that came, I think, with Silhouette. Now, here's where mine start. I have maybe that one. Nope. So I have my autism awareness, blah, blah, blah. I have a whole bunch of them. So I'm going to keep scrolling all the way down to my temporary one. Now, I believe it's this. Nope, this. See, as you can see, as I click through these, you can see I'm loading on the screen. This is different patterns. You can see any, any pattern you click on in here, it'll load anything you have in this so this is a new trick if you guys didn't know about your pattern feature in silhouette this is a great feature but that's not what this tutorial is about we'll have more on that later so I was trying to put this background initially I didn't like it I got rid of it uh, I've been playing around with this for a while but in any event this is the one that I decided to use so I like this but look at oh it still crops it as a pattern right how could I fix that well in your fill pattern here you have advanced options if you click your advanced options, you have all kinds of different things you could do. You could mirror your pattern, you could upside down mirror it, you could zoom out more. Um, it will do all kinds of different things. Now, actually, when I did this before, it zoomed it this way and I didn't like it. Let's see, it zoomed it that way and I didn't like it. That's actually not too bad, but I'm still not going to go with that. Because down here more, you can change your angles if you wanted, you know, you wanted to be wherever, but I'm not going to do that neither. What I want is scale. You grab your scale here and you can actually zoom out. You can see it would pattern it. So I could have a million patterns on there or I can be down to one. So what I want to do is I want to go down just, oh, I angled it, sorry. I want to go down just a little bit. I'm going to keep hitting out here. You see I'm hitting the back arrow to where my image is just in where I want it to be. Too much. All right, and then you can actually go here and hit pan pattern, and then you can grab right here, and you can drag it around wherever you like, you see? So I wanna bring it down a little bit. So anyways, you see what I'm doing here. I don't, I'm not trying to get perfect, but you can get in here, set it up how you want it. And this is how I did that one. I set it to how I wanted it, which I think was somewhere around there. And then um, I went ahead and printed it. And when I printed it, 
I had already mirrored it, so when I printed it for my sublimation, it came out like that. And then I'm going to cut it in a minute, and I'm going to go ahead and put that on the cup. Now, it's a little smaller than I liked, but it's still, um, you know, the cup template, you can't see it on here, but the machine will cut it. So it'll be a good size to fit the cup, hopefully. Okay, so there's one other way that we can try and do this. Let's go back. So I'm going to fill it again with white. I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to grab da, 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 this one here. Okay, I'm gonna place it down on my thing. I'm not gonna put it in my template, I'm gonna place it down here. Zoom out a little bit. Size this up. Oh, undo that, I don't wanna mess with my template. Template, template. I'm gonna size this up. Now I do not know, this next feature I'm gonna show you, I do not know if all versions of Silhouette has this. I don't know if Basic has it, if I'm sure Designer probably has it. I am not sure if Basic has it. If Basic does not have it, I am not sure. From what I understand, I believe I've heard that Cricut does have a warp function so Cricut users, you may be able to do this as well. So basically you're gonna get your image somewhat how you want it over the template. Um, I want it sized about there. I'm gonna go ahead and center it again, doop. Okay, so highlighting only the image that you're working with, you're gonna come down to this little arrow way down here. See where I am on the thing? Wait here. Click that little arrow. And then you're gonna come right here, which is the warp tour. Warp tour. It's a warp panel. Okay, and then I have my shape selected. I'm gonna hit warp selected shape. Now you see that silhouette brings up this cool little grid. I'm gonna go ahead and just close that so it's out of my way. Now you could start taking this grid, and I'm not gonna go into detail to do it all because you guys will get the point once I start doing it, but you could take this and you could start to kind of size your image, drag it to fit within the template. Now this is warping it, so I went a little bit too far there. I'd probably wanna bring this back up some. And then you want it to warp correctly, so now you're gonna adjust this point. With warping, it's always gonna be a point and a counterpoint. If you adjust here, you're gonna have to adjust here. By just this side, I should have to adjust this side. So I'm gonna bring this back down. And I'm gonna bring this back up. Now you guys, this is not a perfect tutorial. I'm not showing you exactly every step by step on how to do it. I'm just trying to give you a quick little idea of some other alternatives. I'm gonna bring this side up some so it gets a little bottom curve. This I'm gonna bring in because that looks like it's stretching out a little bit. Uh, you know, kind of want to even it with the other side. So the other side is right about there. Um, this point somehow got way up here. Yes, son. Uh, do you have a second? Not at the moment. I'm making a video. This point I'm going to bring up to kind of match that. So you can see it's kind of curved here. And once again, it's not perfect, and I'm not going to sit here to get it perfect because I just want to give you guys a basic idea. So by moving each and every one of these points, you can kind of go ahead and get your image set up and curved the way you want to. Now, when I tried to do it earlier, my computer has been crashing a lot on me, and right in the middle of it, it crashed. So that kind of bummed me out, and I didn't want to go in and do it all again. Um, but it seemed to work pretty well. I just don't know once you finish the warp and save the image if it will keep the pick quality. Um, I'm not sure. I tried a different tool that warped in Photoshop and when I tried to save it after, um, the pick quality was horrible. Like it really reduced the, the image quality so it didn't work. But in any event, um, this is something you can try. It seems to work pretty well right here. The image quality doesn't seem to be worse. I'm going to hit enter and see if that saved it. Uh, when I zoom in here, that doesn't seem to be bad. When I go to print preview, 
No, so it looks like it doesn't really affect the image quality at all. So that is that is good. I'm sorry, I was talking with my hands over my mouth. Um, like I said, that's probably not perfectly lined up, but you could see that's a third alternative as a way to try and size the um, images up when working on this. Hey, one other quick update for you guys. I'm sure a lot of you know this, but just in case some of some of the um, questions I've had, I know some of you guys are a little bit newer. So when you go to cut your image, um, obviously uh, make sure you in your settings you have your print border and your cut border showing you can see um if i turn off my print border uh you don't see it when i turn it on you can see if i go to print this it's going to print right through there same thing with the cut border off you can see you know it you don't see where my mat's going to stop cutting with it on you can see it's going to cut all the way up to the very very edge of my mat so in doing that if you need to change your image uh, i'm not actually printing this right now but just to show you guys so i'm going to highlight the thing um so you need to well the first thing i do is set your media size to letters so you know what your mat sizes you're working with uh, in your orientation, I want it to be portrait because it's going to go portrait on my thing. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rotate this around 90 degrees, um, you know, close to it. You can also just uh, go into your settings and, and rotate it your, uh, automatically if you want. Uh, it's just as easy, but there you go. As long as you rotate it yourself, fit it within the, the print border, um, then you know you know, the print borders all the way around here, you know, this is going to print and cut fine. And then lastly, just make sure you probably want to uh, mirror your image just because if you let your printing program mirror it, it may not um, mirror, it, it, it will flip it from one side of the page to the other, as opposed to how Silhouette just flipped it right on the mat. And if it does that, when you actually come back in here and go to cut it, the alignment's not going to be correct to your print and then your machine won't cut it right so that's basically just one quick update that i want to give you guys thanks so another quick update guys after doing that last little video for you guys um i <laughs> my curve template looked a little better than that one when i was playing before and my system crashed and i just got pissed off and decided to quit on it um i just went ahead and played with it a, a little more after to firm up the curved template and it came out pretty good i like it i just printed that on trial paper to see but um, it actually came out bigger than my other one. And I do, of course, like when I wrapped around the cup, it does keep the friends straight. Sorry, it does keep the friends straight on there. Sorry, it's just paper, so it's peeling off. Um, and it keeps them straight as opposed to being curved. Plus, they're a bit bigger. See how that looks right there compared to... The one I initially thought I was going to go with out of frustration. You see Friends is curved in this one. It goes up and down. The guys are curved. And it's much smaller. The Pennywise Bloom doesn't even come to the top. And Friends doesn't go to the bottom. So... You see this template worked out much better so i'm gonna go ahead and print these out real quick i only printed one before thank god i'm gonna print these out and then i'm gonna go ahead and show you one different thing with putting the laminate on the cup so we'll be over there in a minute make sure and make sure when you go to print and cut that you unselect your image so <laughs> when you go to um, cut the template with your sublimation on it it does not try to cut this part out you would really hate that to happen and that's if you lay it up and do the text warp like i did or even the other ways uh, if it shows the red outline the cut marks just make sure you hit no cut so it doesn't ex accidentally cut those one last thing i wanted to show you when doing your laminate and your vinyl together um if you're not a penny pincher like me or one that's I'm like a scrap king I try to save every piece of scrap everything I can so um, if you're not like that if you're in a hurry or a rush you could take your full sheet of um, thermal transfer and just place the whole sheet over your your uh, vinyl and then cut it after um, I was gonna do that for the video but then as I was waiting for my heat press to heat up I couldn't stand wasting a full sheet so I just cut it down a little bit to save a little room but in any event um, so I'm just going to lay this over here and I've already got like a little bubble mark I can see from it touching the heat, but I'm just going to lay it over here and then I'm pressing it at 385 degrees for 
20 seconds. That's 385 for 20 seconds. Now when you do that, you'll have to take it after and cut the vinyl away from it. So I'm just gonna trim it with scissors around there and then lay my sheet on it. And I actually gotta be careful because I was off the line a little bit at the top and I missed the top of my vinyl a little bit. Let's hope when I cut that and place it on a cup, that's not too bad. But that's why I use the full sheet, let it overhang. That way you're hitting every area, you don't miss anything. So I trimmed the sheets down after pressing them full on there and taped my um, transfer paper to it. So now you're gonna place that with the laminate down transfer paper side up. Just put my parchment paper over the top. And this doesn't wanna stay much. I don't wanna leave it like that. So I, because I have the parchment paper covering it, I'm gonna go ahead and do my little silicone sheet too. Cause that's gonna help to keep it down for me for the moment. Enough for me to pull this over and press it for my 60 seconds. 60 seconds, 400 degrees or 395. Actually, I think I probably have it at 385. I can't change it now, but 385 should be good for that. If it's not quite bright enough, I'll hit it for another second or two. I'm not gonna peel that yet. I don't know if you can see. I might press that for a little more. I'm gonna try and press these other two and see. It's possible with my um, silicone sheet. I've heard others say that you can't use a silicone sheet. You can't use the same lip you take either. These get curled up so much though, I don't have no other choice but to use this. I'm gonna turn my heat back up to 395 though. Give this second heat back up to 395. I was worried my Pennywise didn't print good, but as you can see there, it looks like he pinned it pretty good. It's as good as Freddy and Jason and the rest of them. Okay guys, this last one, I'm peel it off here. Had to switch my camera views around some. Very bright, I like how they came out. I think they should look good on the cups. So I'm gonna do as I've showed in my other videos real quick. I'm just gonna show putting one of these images on. And then I'm gonna do the other two by myself. Peel the vinyl from the backing. Shut that down for a minute. Get rid of my scraps so that don't stick to nothing. As I showed in my other video, if you guys have a problem with placements, this is the easiest thing I've found. So you wanna try and use some Dawn in soapy water or um, a little bit of Windex with no ammonia on the cup. Spray the surface a little bit to make it easier to slide the image around if you have to adjust it like you would if you were putting a window vinyl on something. You could probably do that. Uh, I'm not going to. I'm just going to do it the good old fashioned way. Line this back up on here pretty much like that. This side back up like that. Now I got my strip right there. I try and put my opposite, my image on the opposite side of my image. So if that shows through anything, it's the back side. No, I don't have that exactly centered. So I know, I think I'm going to trim a little bit more of this off. I just want it to be a little more centered when I put it on there. Hope we put it on a little better. 
sure. I like to stand up a lot when I do this because I have to get right over it and feel like I get my alignment like perfectly on before I commit. See, I think I'm already bunching it up a little. I'm gonna peel it right back off, set my cup down, recenter. See, that's why we do it like this because if you don't like it, you can reposition. You want to make sure, of course, you're setting it up where when you do put it on there, you're getting the line all laid flat from the get go. So a little bit off. See? Don't commit and you're good. You can keep adjusting it till you feel like you got it exactly where you need to be. Now that I've got it pretty much on, I'm gonna flatten it down in the front here. Make sure I'm good to all the part that I have exposed. So I want no bubbling. I feel pretty comfortable with my top. So peel one side back, peel that off. I'll start to kind of go around the cup like this. Like this way, so you guys can see I'll start to go around the cup like this and just make sure. And before I get to this end, I don't want to commit to putting it down because I want to see if everything's lining up good, which so far it is. I'm going to come to this end, start to peel that and do the same thing from this side. I'm going to come through. I'm kind of just feeding this on here. So far, I'm okay with my lining. I like it. I think this one actually is going to line up really nice. I'm down to the end here. You can see I haven't committed on either side. The top looks like it's in pretty good. The bottom is like perfect all the way around so now i'm gonna commit and i'm looking it looks like i have a little more edge maybe here than i do on this side so i'm gonna commit to this side first that way if this does have a little uh overhang to it i can cover this little bit of an edge it looks like the the, the laminate and the sheet didn't just line up Pretty good on there. But let me go ahead and commit to the end here. You guys can see. So actually, I'm very happy with the lining on this one. You can see I realigned it three times in the beginning and it worked out well. So here we go. Start from the crease. The crease. Perfect, it's not gonna be like a tumbler, but that's as perfect as you can get. Not bad, so guys, hopefully these few tips that I've thrown out here, that's loud. Hopefully these th few tips I've thrown up here um, helps you guys out with the designs a little bit. You can see a little effort and time. Uh, friends came out pretty good, pretty straight, just like if I had put it on the 
curved kind of I've not used Mod, Mod Podge on any of these, and I've washed um, this cup a bunch of times, and it's still nothing wrong with the seal. And that's it, guys. Here, once again, the Dollar Tree Sublimation Cup. This is just a little update for you on helping you design your files. Hope it helps. Once again, um, please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'm promising you I'm going to keep coming out with videos, lots of good videos. It's going to be great. Thank you and have a good night, guys.